Hey everybody, so today we have a MacBook in here and it just won't stop telling me what's wrong. It just keeps making these beepy noises. This is a MacBook Air A1466. It's a little bit older. Now, the interesting thing about this is that if you hear that noise, you're probably used to it on the older Macs. The older Macs have removable RAM and maybe it's very easy to actually um, have that RAM maybe get a little bit dislodged and it'll, you'll hear that beeping noise. It's a very well-known thing, especially even on Windows machines. Now, the interesting thing about this one is the fact that it's not, it doesn't have removable RAM. So why is it making this noise? So we do have it open here and we do see that it's very dusty, very dirty. But we actually, the, the RAM is actually on the other side, so we're going to have to go remove it and see if that's really the case for it. Because it's soldered, it's really interesting, so let's go ahead and take a look at it, open it up, and go from there. So, I know we're going to have a few people who are going to actually just say, hey, why don't you just try resetting the, M the MV RAM? Or, hey, why don't you try resetting the M uh, SMC? Well, let's just put that to rest. So, there you go. That's going to start it up. Boom. Command option P and R. Let's see what you guys think. And we'll press the power button, command option P and R. And we still have that problem. It's not going to do anything. If you're saying SMC, I already took out the battery. You can hold down the power button. It's still not going to do anything. So we need to actually open this thing and stop playing games before it's going to tell us to stop. It's telling us already what the problem is. We need to listen to what the MacBook is telling us. So let's go ahead, open it all the way, and then go from there. Okay, so we removed it here. And I'm just taking a look to see if there's anything super obvious. Don't see anything super obvious. It's very dirty, at least for, for dust. And we'll obviously go into microscope, but I want to see if the behavior changes if we just take out all the other things, because there are lots of different things that can make uh, the behavior change. So let's go ahead and plug in and see if we get any difference. Okay, so let me go ahead and plug this in here. And plug this in. Just don't want to forget this cable. This cable is going to get you your, your light, too, to turn on still. So let's go ahead and plug this in. See if we get any difference in behavior processor gets warm or not. Fan does spin and we are getting our orange light. Processor is getting warm. Okay, So let's just try plugging this in with the screen to see if we get anything else. It's not plugging the keyboard, it's not plugging anything else. Let's not even plug in obviously speakers and we'll see if anything else changes there. Alright, so I have just the board and the LC plugged in. I <laughs> mean just the power cable and the LC plugged in. See if anything else happens. See if we get a backlight or anything. Usually if it's a RAM issue, we're just not going to get any type of display. So we played uh, the easiest part, and we just went ahead and took a look. Same issue, still having problems. So let's take a look under a microscope, because there's no way we're going to be able to see anything if there's any damage, any liquid. Go ahead and take a look and see if we notice anything. We'll go switch to that. See, there's just a lot of hair on these areas, but... Shouldn't be enough to, to do what it's doing. See if there's anything obvious with the RAM. These are soldered RAM. And let's see if there's anything super obvious. Maybe it was loose. But the thing is, why would it get loose? Just out of nowhere? Usually there's, there would be some type of liquid spill. There would be something to cause this from getting loose or maybe damaged. See that? There's this little little balls underneath there. Sometimes these can get possibly loose, but you normally don't see it unless there's some type of damage. You see this area? This could be definitely some an area of liquid spill. You see that? That's not natural, the discoloration here. These are probe points. And you see, look how dirty this one is. Look at that. See all these? Looking for something to see if there's any damage there. Maybe loose solder. Looks pretty good for the most part, but. This is really dusty, dirty. Probably, probably more a little bit worried about this side over here because this is where we have with our potential liquid. So maybe this one's been a little bit impacted under and see if we can find anything. 
you can see all the little solder balls there and I can't see the rest of them because it's a little bit more difficult because they're right next to each other um, but let's go ahead and see if we can just we'll remove this strip and see if we can do a bit of uh, cleanup work here this will be glued you could probably use like a small tweezer yet yeah, so this is pretty good and you get a tweezer behind this one so you can peel this all the way across and see if we can see any damage underneath go see solder balls look to be pretty much intact there An angle that's not optimal and there's lots of other ones to be looking at too and you could have lots of these uh, the solder balls even in the middle. We can only see the edges, we can't see the actual middle. The best way to do this would be to uh, do a reflow on it. You don't want to replace each and every <laughs> single one. Alright, so let's go ahead and see if we can just do the reflow and see if that works. Alright, so for this, uh, the key is really not to put a lot of flux on each one. Um, we want to just make sure we put a line of flux probably on the bottom. Since there's about 16 of them, we can just line it up for the bottom. So there's two rows, so we'll just put a line of flux on each one. And you'll see that it'll actually be enough to go underneath the components here and it's going to push and then it will make sure that we can do a nice reflow if you put too much of it what it's going to do is it's going to get stuck under there it could damage something and we don't want a gunky nasty a bit of flux with our liquid spill or with our solder to mix underneath there because that's not going to be a great uh, fun deal there so you will see when as we're actually heating this up this is actually going to do a really good job of spreading all the flux everywhere because it's mixed with the hot air it's mixed with the hot air and it does a, it's a very good way to do it you can see how this actually component is actually you can see all the flux that actually did get around this component and we're able to actually reflow it very well you'll see it's we know when it's the right temperature is when sometimes the components around there could start to move or obviously the the chip itself is going to move just slightly and we might need to nudge it maybe with a little tweezers and how we pinch it just a little bit to the side there just to make sure that it's not going to flow all the way out and uh, once we let go of that hot air, it's just going to flow right back perfectly into, into position. The, the solder is going to restick itself there after it melts. And then it's going to be, um, that's the whole point of pretty much what a reflow does. So it's going to clean out all this dirt and then it's going to be a nice reflow and melt the solder. And then the solder is going to harden right as that heat actually does lift up there. So we're just going to keep doing this to each one. We're going to make sure everything does look to be pretty good. And then we will really test it out really to see and go from there but it uh, looks pretty good you can see this is kind of after of it now we need to clean this off because you don't want to leave flux absolutely everywhere and uh, the board is pretty dirty as it is it's pretty dusty kind of nasty so we want to make sure that we clean this up and there's not gonna be any any other issues so we'll make sure that we clean up all the flux that that we put on there and we'll also clean just a little bit more pieces of the board because some of it might have been um, just a little bit dirty you don't want to leave any dirt debris and especially how dusty this one is it's actually this is gonna be good just to clean it up with some alcohol we can use a very soft tip brush and then uh, everything will actually look pretty good so we're just gonna examine a little bit more there's some other areas where we can just clean up a bit and uh, yeah we'll kind of just finish off really here All right so let's go ahead Let me put it back and see We'll hold on option key we're just gonna go ahead and do it all right Got a nice bright backlit screen and all right powers on looks good all right guys so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on how to do um, a fix for your MacBook if it's having those three beep noises usually it is a problem more with the RAM there and we were able to fix it for, for solder. We're pretty lucky because that's that's uh, that is one of the possibilities that it can be. If there was still a problem even after this, it's most likely there's a problem probably with the CPU. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please leave a like if you did. Please subscribe for more content. We do lots of MacBook repairs. We do lots of liquid spills. We do data recoveries. We do lots of fun things. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Learned something today. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.